everybody, and welcome to Northern Lion Tries Chrono Arc. I know you're like, Chrono Arc, what's up with the Chrono Art? Is NL playing an anime game? Well, I think the answer to that question is kind of. But what is it also on a mechanics level, the level that I'm more concerned with? It is a deck builder. Would I call it a roguelite? I would, I would call it a roguelite. With RPG mechanics that has been described a little bit, it is in early access, as you can see from the top right corner, EAV 1.06. It's been described as a little bit of Slay the Spire meets Darkest Dungeon. Let's head to the Twisted Land when you're ready. What are you looking at? Wait, are you the one from the Twisted Land? You look more normal than I thought. <laughs> Lamb has God made me, sir. Um, I'll try to get out to the Twisted Land, so I can show you the mechanics. But essentially, it's a very stylistically impressive... That won't be necessary just yet. Um, deck builder with RPG mechanics, as you will see for yourself. Please allow me to leave for the Twisted Land. Thank you. So, we're going to choose some party members to begin with. We're going to start with the... Uh... Oh. We think it's important to, important to play a challenging difficulty because of its roguelike style. I told you it's a roguelike. However, if you're struggling, play it on casual difficulty. That's okay. We'll be on normal. Um, we're going to take the only two units I've used so far. Hein, who is a uh, kind of like an aggressive unit, is powerful against multiple enemies. And we're going to take Joey from uh, Friends, who has potion analysis. So we can analyze a potion without actually having to use it. Now, I haven't used any other characters here. Miss Chain. Miss Chain gains burn when she casts a skill. Her health gauge is protected during burn. Okay, that seems very good. Hollowed Swords at the start of every turn. Azar gives a random ally the Hollowed Sword buff. If they hit an enemy, it creates a Hollowed Sword skill. Let's not worry about all that just yet, shall we? We're going to head out into the Twisted Land here. Um, I did buy this. It's in early access. It was like $22 Canadian, but 10% off or something along those lines. So basically, we have an overworld map situation here. You can see in our inventory, we have a lucky necklace, an active item that can be used outside of battle to remove the fainted debuff from an ally so we can revive an ally. We got food you can eat to gain HP and a key that can open something. Oh, so I was going to go for the chest here, but it says a monster is protecting the area. I will attack. All right, we got two enemies with 16 and 13 HP, respectively. So the way that the game basically works is you draw um, cards at the start of your turn. You could cycle one if you want to. Um, and then you play those cards, which cost mana. Each one has a mana cost associated with it that you can see right here. Uh against the enemies. I mean, it's pretty simple. You also have these abilities that are connected to uh, your character in case you don't maybe don't draw stuff that you uh, want to draw. Oh, I was just interested to see what this was. Um, so for now, I think it's pretty simple. This thing, by the way, represents um, the time it takes till the enemy's turn. So it is a traditional turn-based game. Let me lower myself on the camera side here. Um, which means when we end our turn, the enemies will act. But on top of that, the enemies can also interrupt us. Like, if I were to play two attacks on you... Actually, you might just attack anyway, now that I think about it. Let's try this. So I'm going to basic attack, um, you please. And it's going to do 10 damage with a negative 5% chance of critting. <laughs> it did not work. So when I act again... Your move is going to... Well, this unit's move is going to decrease to zero, which means it's going to get to act before its turn. I don't know why basic attack makes another move cost more, but we're obviously just going to ice this unit. They're going to do a fire wave to get back at us. One of our units dodged, and we'll use our basic heal to heal this guy up. And then we'll pass turn. Following that, you did nothing, which I think is pretty sweet for us. Agility. Activate to select another skill. The cost is reduced by one and gives swiftness during battle. Ignores enemy's action count. Okay, so we will do that. And apply it. Can we apply it to this? No, we cannot. Okay, so we'll apply it to that. Do our basic attack here. Didn't lower your unit or your action count, and we've destroyed you. Loot. Unknown scroll and a soul stone. So by getting soul stones... Well, let's just see what we get from here. Soul stones basically allow your party to level up. So in addition to treating it... 
like a, uh, a standard deck builder where you make your run stronger by adding new cards and upgrading those cards and cutting garbage cards. It also has a, a party aspect, so you can upgrade your party member's stats because they're the ones who are, in effect, actually playing those cards. So what we're going to do is level up Joey here. You can see he gets a bit of a stat gain in a couple of different departments there. Um, but also, it unlocks his passive, so he can analyze a potion without identifying it. And then we can add some new cards into his deck. Healing Potion. Chemical Substance number 12. Healing Vapor. Let's hit him with a Chemical Substance number 12 times 2. I don't like to get too finicky with it. Then, we should know, I was just going to say, we know what our potions do now. Increased damage received by 10% during this stage can be used during a battle. Attack increased during this turn. We still don't know what the scroll does, though. And we're going to equip him with this cloak, because the cloak gives him better healing power. Why not? Sounds good to me. All right. So you can see it's got a lot of intricacy associated with it. There's a lot of different systems working together here. Um, what are you? The world may never know. You're the boss. So before we want to go to the boss, we definitely want to check out all the nodes that we haven't been to. So, like, what's this? A bag of gold that somebody dropped. Voice log test report. We're going to control right click on that. <laughs> We're going to loot the gold. I apologize if you are invested in the idea of the fake lore. If you're into that sort of thing, you're into that sort of thing. I'm not really into that sort of thing. You know what? Let, let's... Make it up to you by experiencing all the corners of the map, just to see if there's some stuff we missed, and indeed there is. Fountain of Oblivion, a fountain that can make you forget something. Who would drink it? Um, go ahead, Joey. Joey has acquired two soul stones. Strange. Did he de-level? He did de-level! I see, so it's so you can respec, basically. Give me- oh, we don't have chemical substance number 12 anymore, on the second one. Paralyzing dart. Damage 1, accuracy 112. Ignores taunt. Stun chance 120%. Yo, put that into the deck. Stop yelling at me about where I'm going, Joey, okay? It's only my second run playing the game, I'm doing my best. We have a stack of hedgehogs. They have 50% armor. The dochi on top receives a all attacks and reduces incoming damage. Okay, I understand. Let's swap out our basic heal, please. Let me, let me try again. Swap out the basic heal, chemical substance number 12. Okay. Target intoxication. Success chance 111%. What the heck is intoxication, brother? I got no idea. Plus intoxication. 10 damage per turn. That's incredible. Then hit him with the basic. I don't think you're going to live. You're, you're dead already. Yo, that's an incredible attack. Okay, so we got more soul stones, which is fantastic. Because then we can use those to level up this guy. He gets Madness. When he destroys an enemy with a skill, cast it again with half damage to a random enemy. Now tear up. Attack additional random enemy. Multiple attacks. Random enemy, but for 25, which is nuts. Or all enemies. I like all enemies. And then, Intimidation. Six damage. Swiftness, so it doesn't affect the enemy's action bar. Target gets Fear. Also disables taunt. Why not give that a shot? Look, life is too short to read all the cards in every roguelite. Old skeleton heap. Free loot, brother. Get rid of that. Move along. But anyway, as mentioned, you can see there's a lot of systems of play in this game. And it's intriguing. I think, like, at first, you know, Kate recommended the game. She saw another YouTuber play it. And I kind of... I wouldn't say I looked down on it, but I saw the art and thought to myself... Maybe this isn't really up my alley. Um, but from playing it, I'm like, no, I get it. It's just that, you know, Fire Emblem and XCOM are the same game, just with different art, right? That's what we got going on here, too. They got the same strategy core at the heart of them. I know they're not literally the same game. Okay. Swiftness ignores taunt and has a 120% stun chance, which is very valuable because we don't want to have him attack. So send him. We have stunned him. 
He cannot take action. Then go ahead, hit him with the chemical substance number 12, brother. That's 10 damage per turn. He has resisted CC. I don't know what that means, but that's okay. Um, he is no longer stunned, so we only stunned him for one action, but that's fine. Uh, let's do a restock. We cannot afford our basic heal because it cost us one mana to do the restock. I understand. Okay, he's going. He roars. We take a little bit of damage. Nothing, nothing huge. You're still taking 10 damage per turn. My, my cat would like to leave the room. If you'll give me a moment, my cat would like to leave the room. Go ahead, come on. As is your prerogative. Okay. So, in one turn, he's going to act. I think you hit him with the Intimidation, which actually doesn't affect his swiftness. So, fear. Lower speed, lower evade, and extra critical chance. Gotta hit him with the how-to basic. 12 damage. He throws out a quick little scratch. But that's okay, because we got a basic heal. We'll throw out here. Seemed to go pretty well, as far as I'm concerned. He's still afraid, but no longer poisoned. Pass turn. A little bit of damage, no big deal. Obviously, I'm still figuring out the systems at play here. 14 damage, 13. We might as well. Hit him with both. Why does this cost more now, though? Because you already... Is it because you acted? It's one thing I haven't figured out about the tutorial yet. Well, you can't really do anything, so we'll just pass turn. I'm still... I'm just trying to work it through. I don't understand, like, why when we use a spell... It makes the next spell cost more sometimes? But anyway, we did defeat the first boss, which is uh, not a landmark accomplishment, just for the record. But hopefully that's given you a little idea of how things work here. Credits. You can permanently unlock or reinforce the arc before the journey starts. It is saved if not used. A hunter's ring. Sounds fantastic. Unknown scroll. Unknown scroll. Gold. And some soul stones as well. So... We will level up again. Why not? Give me uh, another healing potion. I guess you only get one on that level. And then uh, Hein. Let me get... Uh... Let's get an Identify Weakness thrown out here. Why don't you take this Hunter's Ring? So in between each level... You have the opportunity to go to these campfires. And when you're at campfires, you can use items, including these scrolls. Um, so let's use a camping item. Here's some food for you. They're fully healed. Here's a scroll for you. Sure. There's another scroll. There's another scroll. There's another scroll for you. I don't know if we burned it for firewood or if we actually read it, but request rescue cannot be done. Can be done. Oh, select party members to recruit. I didn't know we could do this, actually. Let's go with you, because we saw your burn ability. It seems very good. All right. Why? Excuse me? Oh, do you show up later or something as a result of that? I don't know. I'm kind of figuring it out as I go along. I think... Oh, on the way. All right. I feel like you can now one-time save in Campfire Field. Fantastic. Why don't you go ahead and save me then? Closing the game. This save data can only be loaded once. All right. Do not close the game. <laughs> Just move me forward, please. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for it to get so complicated. All right. Misty Garden 2.0. Uh, I'm not 100% sold on the game so far. And I do wish, you know, for a game with so, much, uh, so many systems to play... A little bit of greater tutorialization would also be pretty useful for me. But I definitely, I see what it's going for. And I think it's got a very interesting uh, melange of game mechanics right here. Alright, so you're about to attack. How about instead of doing that, we uh, smack you immediately with a paralyzing dart. Do you notice some skills cost more? A character who casts a skill will overload. A character with Overload will need one more mana to cast an additional skill. Except the Swiftness skill from a Blue Gem, which does not Overload. Okay, fair enough. That you've answered my question. You are now going to get hit with a little bit of Intoxication. And we are uh, now unable to do anything else, so we will just take some damage. The Healing Wave of Pharos! It's okay. Intimidation. 
Gives the target fear. Healing potion. I think we will use the healing potion on our new party member. You got hurt pretty bad, which is fantastic. In fact, you're about to get hit again. You love to see it. So this should not cost two to use intimidation followed by basic attack. Yeah, it only costs one. Beautiful. Five healing per turn. Love and life. You should be dead. Fire wave will hit me, but you should be dead. Oh, you didn't even get to act. Now you're dead. Works for me. Go ahead and give me a shuffle on that bad boy right there. Give me a basic heal on Madame. And then an assault slash on you, please. Then we'll pass turn, because we have no other cards. By using uh, the soul orbs, we can uh, give ourselves more cards as well. We can give ourselves more draw, I should say. Um, why don't you go ahead and heal me? Heal you, I guess. Damage amount 5? It's not good, but it's good enough. Unknown scroll, soul stone, loot all. Alright. So I think maybe now, why don't we try to learn something? Like, Joey, you're doing great. What if I give you a draw skill, though? Draw two skills, or draw a skill instantly and draw one more card for three turns. Kind of like the idea of just drawing two right out the gate. Oh, Lucy is the draw skill as plus mass man, max mana character. I understand now. Okay. So we're starting to piece it together. Lucy's like the deck master. Requires a key. Requires a key. We do not have a key. Let's use this scroll. Lifting scroll. The world may never know <laughs> what that does. A jar that may contain something useful. Acquired bread. I love bread from a jar. Who doesn't? A jar that may contain something useful. Healing potion. You know what? Why don't you go ahead and get used on Miss Chain right off the bat. Interesting name there. You are a shop, by the way. I want to see what I can do with my gold. Buy. A key. Fantastic. We do only have 1,300 gold. So why don't you go ahead and give me a key. I'm just going to say it. You're all thinking it. It's highway robbery. But, uh, hey. Let's go see. It's a little suspicious. The key store is right next to the locked chest. That's all I'm going to say. Lifestone ring. Pain resist. Maximum health goes up. Holy water and attack decrease potion. I'm thinking you can equip that on Miss Chain as well. Alright, let's keep moving on. I hear the second boss is really tough. So as is, you know, I... I have a weird relationship with roguelites uh, slash deck builders. I like them, but also... I feel like... They have a lot of competition, you know? It's a... Uh, excuse me, please restock uh, this. Another healing potion, how dare you. Um, when I say they have a lot of competition, what I mean is you're dealing with, you know, all of the best roguelites and also all of the best deck builders. You need to get hit with this dang paralyzing guard, brother. You probably should have identified your weaknesses first, I apologize. Um... So I'm not sure where I sit on this game overall right now. Um, can I kill you in one hit? 11 damage. What if I redraw our basic heal? Probably not, huh? An attempt was made. Excuse me, I did not attack you. Just relax yourself. Agility. Activate to select another skill. The cost is reduced by one. Yas. Might as well make sure you're toasted. Uh, and then pass the own oh, basic heal. Even better. Um, but I, So I, I kind of got off what I was saying. But yes, right off the bat, I'm like, I'm not totally sure how I feel about this long term. But for right now, I'm like, I get it. Hold on, you're going to have Intimidation, so we might as well just start with the Assault Slash, I think. Because it does more damage. And then, oh, no, we can still, hold on, we can still do this. You're dead. Um, but I think it's got a lot of cool mechanics, and I'm not just saying that because I'm playing it at exactly the present moment. I'm being 100% sincere with you. 
And the fact that uh, it could allow a curmudgeon like me to get over the art style being so obviously out of my wheelhouse is a very positive thing as well. So I have increased my max mana one more time, and we will fight this boss. You have 209 HP and a curse. At the start of every turn, add the curse skill to your hands. Your friends will collapse because of your choice. All right. Um, crucifying curse. If the skill stays in your hand, it's automatically cast on all characters. The target gets horrendous pain. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll tell you what. You get it. Because you haven't really done anything for us. Five damage per turn? Big whoop. Okay, easy money. Shuffle, a basic heal. Draw. Identify weakness, which now gives the next hit a huge critical chance bonus. We don't really want to use it on a... Uh, on a paralyzing dart then. So I'm just going to put it on the on the assault slash and then we will pass our turn. Moving doll. Uh-oh. Must be defeated first. Okay. That's unfortunate. Curse of the butler. Okay, hold on. Attack decrease weakening potion, holy water. Attack enhancing potion. You're still going to get the crucifying curse just for the record. Might also toss you a basic heal real quick. Might also toss you a healing potion real quick. Can target an enemy regardless of taunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to hit you with the poison. And you are going to hit me with fury. If a character has an attack skill, it can be used by consuming mana at the start of the turn. I don't fully understand what you're getting at, but I think I'm going to pass turn here. Enchant the doll. I'm a little afraid. Alright, what are you taking damage from? You're just afraid? Class of the butler. Okay, hold on. You gotta start with the basic heal here. A weakening curse can still be applied. Might as well agility, paralyzing dart, and then... Does it ignore taunt? It does ignore taunt. Just send it straight down Main Street, and then we can do one more basic attack. Ah, oh, but it has to hit a taunted unit. Which is only you, but still, that's alright. Sometimes, I will definitely say it seems like there's a little... There's a lot of stuff going on at any given moment. <laughs> it's hard, But that's true with any roguelite. You know, it's hard to follow any roguelite right off the bat. Okay, so we're healing you again. Hold on. Crucifying Curse. Horrendous Pain. You know where that's going. Right down Main Street. <laughs> Go ahead, keep hitting them. Doesn't matter. You're yeeted. Did because we got the kill, we got a passive skill that hit the other enemy. It was gonna hit a random enemy, but still, this is great stuff. All right, you're gonna attack in four moves. Play your draw. Get your get your heal skill. Intimidate. Oh, it's not gonna kill though. It's gonna be close. What do you think chemical substance will kill? No. However, this will kill and then thus hit this enemy. Yas. Okay, pass turn. Oh, you gotta you gotta spend the curse. I think just loading that curse up on one enemy is, is the right thing to do. Ah, I shouldn't have passed turn, I should have shuffled our card. Anyway, everything's going just fine right now. We do uh I do kinda wanna what happens if you shuffle the uh, you can't shuffle the curse. Okay, shuffle the weakness out. I was looking for a heal. We got one. Send it. Weakening curse. You get it, because you're not doing anything anyway, apparently. Chemical substance. Enjoy that. Assault slash. Dodged. The moving doll. No taunts, though. Okay, you are minus 11 HP here on death's door. Um, can't help but feel at this point we might want to move it around a little bit. You're still at minus seven. I think you have been, you've actually fainted now, and I am definitely going to die. So, previously, I thought I was good. It turns out I'm bad, but not in the good way of bad, but actually in the bad way of bad. Our, now our main unit, uh, attack-wise at least, 
is on death's door and we have no means with which to return them to life and uh lucy did you get stuck in an ir irreversible situation again well don't worry though just embrace destiny this is not the end anyways all right but i am gonna die Let's see how this goes. Excuse me, it's like you took my cards. How does it feel like to kill your lovely friends? Well, it could be better. That's alright, because you're getting... Roast... Not roasted? Okay, it turns out I am the one who is getting roasted. Minus 3 HP with no basic heals. Minus 10 HP with no... Game over. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Even if you keep failing, your effort does not. I think that's a pretty good example of what's going on in Chrono Arc. It seems to me as of right now to be the kind of game that, you know, there's obviously more going on than I could let on the first time I uh, played it here. And I think if you dive into the systems, you'll, you might get more meat off the bone than I've gotten so far. There's definitely a lot of stuff at play here. It seems very cool. For now, thanks for watching. There will be a link in the video description below if you want to check it out for yourself on Steam. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Click the like button if you enjoyed the video. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!